On the face of it, a game hidden within a game is just a fun Easter egg. On reflection though, these treats are just reckless world endangerment on the part of the developers. Because if you're as easily distracted as us, you'll wind up playing them instead of getting on with saving humanity or your family or whatever the mission was supposed to be before you got sidetracked. Here are seven games tucked away inside games that almost spell doom for any poor suckers relying on our video game protagonist. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Where are they brought I don't know anything from? about any numbers. What about Dragovich? Do you remember him? Give us what we want, we'll guarantee your safety. In Black Ops 1, Alex Mason finds himself strapped to a chair, helpfully answering questions asked by nice men. What's your name? Fuck you! Wait, no, the other thing, being interrogated by shadowy figures who like torture. Where were you born? Kiss my ass! So when he finally gets the chance to escape, what's the first thing that Mason does? Pick the lock on the door with some of those pointy medical things? Luge that trolley through the corridor and out the window to freedom from where he can figure out who his captors are and put a stop to their machinations? Well, according to our playthrough, he was straight on the computer in the corner of the room, booting up 1970s text adventure Zork. I guess it's more fun than being shouted at about numbers? Come on, Mason, stop playing Zork. There's more important stuff that needs your immediate attention. I didn't mean Dead Ops Arcade. <sighs> the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy is a miracle of vault tech technology. It can monitor your vital signs, target enemies for you, keep track of your possessions, and even load and play holotapes you find lying around. Oopsie. <laughs> no, no, no. Away. Unfortunately, that also means you can play holotape games on your Pip-Boy. Yeah, I wasn't actually cryogenically frozen, I've just spent the last 200 years playing anti-communist propaganda game Red Menace. Hey, does anyone else suddenly feel like crushing communism? Still, I can't just play Donkey Kong clone Red Menace forever. Now I can head out into the great open wasteland to pick up my quest and become a shining beacon of heroism. Ooh, wait, free holotape game. There we go. I mean, I guess a few games of Pitfall can't hurt, right? And a few hours of Grognak and the Ruby Ruins. Yeah, look, you Commonwealth guys are gonna have to sort your own problems out. I'm kind of busy here. Step one. Find plans. Step two, save world. Day of the Tentacle is the 1993 sequel to 1987's Maniac Mansion. In it, one of the kids from the original game heads back to the mansion with two friends to try to stop an evil purple tentacle from taking over the world. I mean, that's what they're supposed to be doing. But two of the kids end up trapped in completely different time periods, and if the other one uses the computer in Weird Ed's room, he can abandon the anti-tentacle efforts to play through the entirety of the original Maniac Mansion instead. Bernard, you don't need to play through Maniac Mansion. You were there. You know what happens. Oh great, as if this game didn't have enough disregard for the space-time continuum. In Space Quest 3, a 1989 puzzler that generously describes itself as a 3D animated adventure game, you play as Roger Wilco, fearless space janitor. Though generally he's fearless because he's too stupid to notice that he should be afraid. In Space Quest 3, Roger is on an achingly meta quest to save two video game developers from enslavement at evil video game developer Scumsoft. You're really setting out your stall early on with a name like Scumsoft. The problem is, Scumsoft games are actually kind of fun. Take Astro Chicken, for example, which is a sort of Lunar Lander clone, but with a chicken. So even when you complete Astro Chicken and decipher the plea for rescue from the two developers encoded within it, you might well decide to just carry on playing Astro Chicken. If you somehow manage to tear yourself away from the game and usher Roger to the events of Space Quest 4, you encounter a new, even better obstacle. Ms. Astro Chicken. <laughs> Sorry, fate of the universe, you are going to have to wait. Whoa! This game's circuits have melted into a mass of molten silicon. Eh, probably for the best. I see here that Sergeant Kelly has requested your immediate attention. Head directly to Marine Command. 
It's just that way. Arcade technology apparently gets a bit of a downgrade between now and the year 2145. That's the only explanation for the fact that Super Turbo Turkey Puncher, which can be found in Doom 3, recycles the pixelated graphics from the original 1993 Doom. But although Super Turbo Turkey Puncher might just look like mindless mashing of the Y button, it's actually a sophisticated game of precision timing. You could be here for literally tens of minutes playing it. And it's not entirely wasted time either. In the BFG edition, if you break the machine's high score of 25,000 points, you get an achievement called Killing Time. And a sarcastic email from HR docking you two days of vacation time. Oh well, when I eventually do get around to starting the storyline, the entire HR department is going to be turned into a bunch of shambling zombies, and their line manager will be an archfile, so I doubt they'll be keeping track of my allocation. Humanity had rather just hope I don't stumble across another arcade cabinet now that the forces of hell have invaded. Oh wait, what's that over there? Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3. I can't wait to get a passive aggressive email from Satan asking what's taking so long. Did you see a black car around here recently? I see lots of black cars. It drove through here at high speed. High speed? Through here? No, I didn't see anything like that. Shenmue is ostensibly a game about tracking down your father's mysterious killer, but only when it doesn't get in the way of your busy schedule of pallet shifting and forklift truck racing. You all do your best now. As if getting a part-time job wasn't time consuming enough, you can also waste time and the money you've earned at your part-time job on classic Sega arcade games. Space Harrier and Super Hang On, both designed by Shenmue's director Yu Suzuki, are playable in Rio's local arcade. it's not like your father's killer is fleeing to Hong Kong right now, Rio. It gets even worse when you get to Hong Kong in Shenmue 2 with the inclusion of a deluxe outrun cabinet playable for $5 a throw, no less. It's no wonder we haven't paid our rent in weeks. Sorry, not now. I'm a little short on cash. What? No money? We should be just about finished by the time Shenmue 3 comes out. <gasps> Maybe that was the plan all along. Man, it is like we bought the park and got every ride to ourselves. You know, that was the third thing I was going to do if I ever won the lottery. Whispering Oaks Amusement Park in Left 4 Dead 2 isn't quite the fun family day out it used to be, mostly due to the exorbitant entry price that doesn't even include Fast Pass, and how it's overrun with zombies. So the prime objective of any visitor to the park these days should be getting out as quickly and uneaten as possible. Not, as in our case, playing all of the carnival games in the hope of winning carnival prizes. There's Stash Whacker, the Mustachio Strongman game, the Peanut Gallery, all of which take up valuable escaping time and all of which produce loud, horde attracting sounds if you win. Oh, Come on, dude. It's not even like the prizes are any good. I won this gnome that I apparently have to carry with me for the rest of the campaign if I want an achievement. Curse you, Mustachio! Mustachio! <laughs> Those were the times games within games almost spelled disaster, or, in the case of Grand Theft Auto, kept everyone safe from rampages by keeping GTA protagonists occupied. Alright, thanks for, um, thanks for watching and like and subscribe, or whatever. See you next time on Outside Xbox. Yes, what he said. Alright, thank you for watching that feature about games within games. If you would like to see more features of that sort, which you can watch on any device you like, Pip-Boy, telephone, uh, PC, console, PlayStation 4 maybe, if you're feeling particularly rebellious, then check out the playlist below. We have Show of the Week on one side, which is our weekly show, as the name suggests, and that's us larking about based on a particular game. And on the other side, we have features which are based on multiple games. Uh, which, if you're more omnivorous sorts, you might want to try those. Uh, it's more of this sort of thing, but not exactly the same as this sort of thing, because that would be weird to rewatch the video. Although, don't let us stop you if that's what you want to do. You know, learn it all off by heart, right? And then repeat it to us over a series of tweets uh, at Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.